It's me, Mario! Hey guys, welcome back for another episode, Hello. and for newcomers, welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to take a look into an idea I've had long before I knew anything about making videos, and the inspiration for this idea was years ago, after the release of Mario's 25th anniversary collection for the Wii. It featured 16-bit ports of Super Mario Bros. 1, 2, 3, and the Lost Levels. And for those not already aware, the Lost Levels is the Lost sequel that we never received here, since it was viewed as being too difficult to be really popular with an American audience. The truth is, our Super Mario Bros. 2 is a reskinned version of Doki Doki Panic, a Famicom game. But anyway, on the surface, without any other context, these four classics on one disc brought to us nicely in 16-bit makes this 2010 release seem maybe decent and nothing inherently wrong with it. But that's only if you ignore the fact that the same exact game was already released back in 1993, 17 years before it, on the Super Nintendo. And even more embarrassing for this Wii release is that on the Super Nintendo, just a year or two later, they came out with Mario All-Stars plus Super Mario World on the same Super Nintendo cart. They didn't even give us Mario World with a Wii release. I mean, think of it this way. If you were to hypothetically put yourself in the shoes of a gaming company, imagine yourself all the way back in 85, 86, 88, 90, at ground zero building a legacy with big, amazingly successful NES launches of these titles. Then, as a way of an encore and genius marketing tool, you make those classics that were loved by millions, you beef them up to 16-bit for 1993, and then proceed to launch a ton of mainline successful games from that point all the way to 2010. And as 2010 comes, it's the 25th anniversary. What games would you choose for this collection, and how would you go about it? Would you ever, even once, have thought, aside from joking with yourself, to release what you already did back in 1993? A choice that is so disturbingly lazy that it wouldn't even made sense for a 10-year anniversary, but you do it for the 25th anniversary. Yeah, that's the empty feeling of knowing that something just doesn't make any sense. It's no surprise that they pushed this out quickly in December, too. Literally, just to grab cash in the most hollow and quite frankly, most uninspired and laziest way possible. And don't take what I'm saying as more than what it is. What I'm saying comes from a place of genuine love and respect for the franchise, its games, and the sobering disappointment that comes with being through so much over 17 years just to see the exact same thing that came out as if we haven't gone anywhere. Not to mention, to consider that all four of these games in their original state were already available for years on the exact same system via the virtual download. Basically, I can't put it much more clearly than Damian McFerrin with Nintendo life. Super Mario All-Stars 25th Anniversary Edition is a prime example of what happens when a highly esteemed developer decides to push out a product with the minimal amount of effort. Aside from protecting its own profits, we can see little reason for Nintendo to leave Super Mario World and Super Mario 64, both of which are available on the virtual console, off the disc. And if the firm were truly serious about creating the definitive history of its most famous mascot, why didn't it go the additional mile and put on Super Mario Land 2, Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario RPG, and a whole host of other notable titles? To cap it off, the bonus items are entirely pointless. Even dedicated followers of the portly plumber will have difficulty getting excited over a flimsy art book and a CD that is good for one listen and no more. If you really feel the need to discover Mario's origins, then our advice is simple. Download the first and third games from the Virtual Console and leave this sorry excuse for a celebration on the shelf. So anyway, let's put ourselves in the captain seats this time and hop into Mario's time machine and go back in time to 2010 and properly use our appreciation, passion, and love for Mario when having this discussion of what would not only be a dream come true of an anniversary collection, but more importantly, something that is 100% feasible and literally could be developed over the course of only a few months. Even back in the Wii era where their CDs could hold 4.7 gigabytes all the way up to 8 depending on the layering, I have a list of 20 ROMs that I added up together and it didn't even come to a gigabyte. Plus, we know Nintendo has a ton of practice porting their own games to multiple consoles, so there's really nothing that should have gotten in their way. It's time to talk about an idea, and hopefully if Nintendo would never make this, which would probably not happen, I hope a fan makes it, because it is completely feasible and would be an amazing collection to have. So, starting things out, the first part of this idea is to have a hub or overworld with the chosen games in it. While a few venues could work well, I believe that Mario 64's castle, the first iconic leap into 3D, and its painting specifically would work perfectly for the concept. Hubs like these have been used in the past for collections, such as Sonic on the Saturn where you can walk between the games, or even the multiple PlayStation 1 Namco collections where you walk around first person between the arcade cabinets, and the variety of venues just makes the collections play and feel so much better than just a list of titles that you choose from. Plus, Mario deserves this type of treatment, and it would be easy, the hub already exists, and if it had to be recreated, it's not even very big at all. Speaking of recreating, 
the question of if it should be the N64 style out of respect for the original and nostalgia, or be updated to bring us even more detail and appreciation of how far we've come is a good one. But then you should ask yourself, why wouldn't you just include both with an option to switch between the two or even make one of them unlockable if you want? Since I'm recording with an N64, that's the hub we will be looking at today. So, I mentioned unlockables. I believe that there should be a free play mode, but I think there's a big opportunity with an adventure mode that could really capitalize on the achievements and unlockables aspect of playing all of these games together in the castle. And that's how I'd really like to go over everything, as if this adventure mode exists and a plan of how it could all play out, and have a real feeling of walking us through Mario's timeline. So the first game that goes behind the door that doesn't require any accomplishments or stars, we could replace bob Battlefield with Super Mario Bros. It's the best and most appropriate title for the first room. There's actually another game that I considered would make more sense in a timeline perspective, but I believe it makes more sense to start things out this way, while the other game in mind could be included in a different way. I also believe that the six stars given based on certain worlds or stages being cleared, plus a seventh for gathering the 100 coins, still totally makes sense and works for this. For Super Mario Bros, all it would mean is that you need to either clear a world of four stages or collect 100 coins to get your first star, and then you're able to open some other rooms. You could easily use these bulletin boards with alternate text for fun facts, such as this game came back in 1985, was inspired by Miyamoto, the reception. It could also include pictures, like even from the original manuals, of how to play that specific title, characters, enemy descriptions, and everything like that. After getting that first star, we can then open a few other doors. I would say that Thwomp's Fortress would be a good room for Super Mario Bros. 2. It's another must-have in the Mario collection, and really a no-brainer to have on the first floor and available right after you play Super Mario Bros. 1. And of course, I have the same idea for all of these rooms where the text can be replaced with pages from the manual on how to play and more information about the game. It really would come out so great and be so easy to do. The other one-star door gives access to a small room with a secret slide through one of the windows. Whether or not this room displays box art, I'm not sure, because I do like the aspect of the surprise and paying homage to the originality of the castle too. Maybe some old Game Boy ads or something like that, just so the player gets a sense of what could possibly be through that window, and then when you jump through you get Mario Land for the Game Boy. It's iconic, and since it's a short and small game, I feel that it definitely belonged in this tiny room, I feel like a bit of a bonus or secret just like the slide did. Once we have three stars, then we can open a couple more rooms that I'm excited to talk about. First, let's look at Jolly Roger Bay's lobby. I think this grand size and walls could really display the absolute gigantic and infinitely important title, Super Mario Bros. 3. Back in 1990, this game took the US by storm. All of the current new Super Mario Bros. share so many similarities to this game specifically that it definitely deserves a nice large room. Heck, I think the aquariums are even a nice touch, but it can always be repurposed to something else. Something else that we really have to consider about this room is how to use these two little secret black compartments. The one on the right that would normally reveal a secret water room and star should hold another little game, and I believe a title that would not only be perfect for its short length, but also has its imperative role in the legacy of Mario. It would be Donkey Kong on the arcade. This is the first we ever saw of what would become the Mario character. Although the original name was Jumpman, it is the same character that would become Mario just a little bit later in a title before Super Mario Bros. 1. And speaking of that, how should we use this other little black square in the room? Well, I think it would be perfect to hold Mario Bros. from the arcade, another extremely small and simple game, but also serves as a title in the very foundation of the Mario legacy. Moving on to the other 3 star door, as you've been seeing it's been all about the 8 bit versions of games. Well, this is a room that shows 3 paintings nicely already, and we know that these older games take up basically no space at all, so after the player has experienced the 8 bit Mario games, why not then introduce them to what we got back in 1993 all at once on the same floor, just as we were, with all 16 bit versions of those 3 titles. This one room could hold basically all of the functionality of all stars, aside from the lost levels, but this will be in a different part of the castle. When moving on to the first boss door, you might wonder, what game should be placed here? And I actually think that this would still serve itself best as a boss encounter, but more of a Bowser boss rush. I believe it would make a lot of sense to have Super Mario Bros. 1 last level, Mario Bros. 3 last level, and then actually cap with the original N64 Bowser stage here, authentically tying the hub and games together for a truly satisfying and somewhat challenging experience, but just the start of celebrating the evolution of the Bowser boss fights, and we can do similar things in the upcoming Bowser rooms as well. But overall, as you can clearly see, the theme on this first floor is about getting the start of Mario's legacy. Once we get that key, then we can unlock the door to the basement. For sake of themes and the appropriate titles, I actually think the courtyard should have a star restriction so we can't get there quite yet, but now it's time to check out the basement, as we know the Bowser door is on the left, so we will get to that soon enough. 
I'd say the very first title that should be staring you in the face should be none other than Super Mario World, the start of the new era and another gigantic hammer to help solidify Mario's greatness on the new 16-bit system. Now keep in mind, all of the games we've been looking at so far have been pretty straightforward picks, and that's because of how linear the whole series was to start, but we're going to get into territory of when Mario started branching off into other types of gaming on multiple platforms. Speaking of that, since we're moving on to another ideal spot for a surprise title, which I've given some thought, what I think would make a really great appearance on this floor and be a total surprise is Mario Clash. In an anniversary collection done right, to celebrate the climb that Mario has, it belongs in a collection. Just coming around the corner of this basement, wondering what you might see and being met with Mario Clash would be pretty epic, and lets you know that this labor of love is only getting started. Moving on to the other parts of the basement, I believe that this spot for Hazy Maze Cave would actually be an ideal setup for when the Mario franchise jumped into another genre altogether, and most importantly, was the start of a series that's pushing on 10 installments already. You might even know what game I'm hinting at. You would be jumping into Super Mario Kart. This game belongs in an anniversary collection. It has games on over 7 of Nintendo's consoles if you include its handhelds. Of course it should be in here. It would be a mistake to not include it. As you probably remember, in the castle you can make your way out to the moat once you've emptied the water. I think there's actually a perfect title for all of the way out here. It just feels appropriate to have a far away secret. Little game out here, it's finally time to bring out the real Super Mario Bros 2 or Lost levels. Maybe give an unlockable or an option to show 16-bit or 8-bit playability. Either way, the idea behind having it out here is clear, and after the first floor with the other early titles is simple. It's because so many, at least a solid 99% plus, if we're honest, had no idea about the real Super Mario Bros. 2 until way, way later. And also the fact that we had to go out here for it is also reflective of the literal truth that you had to go out looking if you were ever going to find out about the real Super Mario Bros. 2. Speaking of sequels, something else to mention at this point, I would say that that wing cap room when you stare at the ceiling of the castle from the lobby brings you right into another excellent little title, Super Mario Land 2. This one was much more true to the feeling and looking of a real portable Mario adventure. And ultimately, it does belong on this first floor. Okay, as far as the second Bowser boss rush goes, I believe that the transition of Dire Dire Docks and the idea behind boarding Bowser's sub before you can fight him isn't really an easy idea to use here at all. If anything, you can leave the Bowser's sub mission in the game if you wanted to, but I would say that this hallway could also be best for just the second Bowser boss rush in the adventure, and I think a good lineup for that would have you going against the last level of Super Mario World, the last level of Mario Land 2, and then ending with the showdown of Bowser in the Fire Sea. Once we unlock the third floor in the castle, we can get into even more Mario excitement, and I'd say a beautiful painting to be staring at as soon as you get up those stairs, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. It came out in 95 and is quite a bit different than the other installments, with baby Mario being escorted by Yoshi's. It was definitely 100% its own adventure, eventually had its own sequel, and absolutely belongs with the rest of the Mario titles in this epic anniversary collection. Next place to look at, how about this little painting on the wall of Tall Tall Mountain? We should have another completely different Mario adventure that didn't come to us until 1996 with Super Mario RPG. Even though they got Squaresoft to help with this game back in the day, we know Nintendo has the rights to it, with it being available for virtual download in the past, and when you're thinking of how to legitimately celebrate 25 years of the Mario franchise, you're looking at it. You need these heavy hitting titles cleverly spread out with a flowing organization to it. Next room I'd like to look at is the tiny huge world with its three paintings. I've had a few different ideas for this room, and what my head keeps coming back to is showing the journey and diversity of the Mario legacy. So I believe that these three paintings should be Mario Tennis, Mario Golf, and Mario Party. It's a perfect room for some excellent N64 multiplayer action in the first installments of these three respective series. This is what a labor of love looks like, and this is what nothing short of a true legacy deserves. It wouldn't even be that hard, you don't have to be that clever to come up with stars and accomplishments for these games either. These games already have their own single player accomplishments, so just assign them to that. For the last painting on this floor, I've really been thinking quite a bit about what should go here. Moving over to the room with a hidden painting that you can only see in the mirror's reflection, along with your cameraman Lakitu. So we've covered a lot of games and series at this point, and I think it's fair for an anniversary collection to really show the full length and diversity of the franchise. So since we already have Party, Tennis, Golf, and Kart for Super Nintendo, as much as I want to throw Mario Kart 64 right here, I can recognize already that putting the best version of Dr. Mario in the game is probably the most appropriate choice to make here. 
it has multiple games in its series, so it should at least be included in one of the rooms, and I think it's a decent place for it. Alright, so after we gather 50 stars between all of these games, then we unlock the final floor of the castle, which is three more spots for games. Here's what I think. In the middle here, front and center, in place of the clock, should be the very first entry of what has grown into a big series, with its timeless aesthetic, Paper Mario. To have a castle full of Mario's best and most iconic games, there's simply no way out of it. This RPG from 2000 is a completely fresh and different take on Mario up until that point, and absolutely deserves a spot in this castle, and the memory can more than handle it. There are two more spots on this floor, and it's really hard to narrow it down. This hypothetical anniversary collection isn't here to pretend like 3D All-Stars isn't coming out, and that it exists. Plus, I think, especially at this point, it seems kind of random, it would be weird to play Mario 64 inside of the Mario 64 themed hub, like a Mario Inception. But really, what has to be done here is featuring another iconic franchise that he was the face of. It would be Super Smash Bros. There's no doubt that this classic deserves a real place in Mario's history. It's a huge franchise. And we all know this type of thing simply wouldn't have existed the same way. It couldn't have been realized the same, or at least even been close without him. As a Mario fan, ask yourself, how excited were you when Mario was in Super Smash Bros? Do you want it on your disc? I'm sure you do. That's why Super Smash Bros is going right here on the list. On this last space, I've really thought to myself about it and what would make the best addition to this collection overall. And I've come right back to Mario Kart 64. And the thing to ask ourselves is really how well does this castle tie Mario's inception into all of the directions he was headed by the 2000s. And to me, I think it does a great job. But like I said, I'm definitely curious on what your guys' ideal castle hub would look like. Or even if you were to choose a different hub or idea entirely, what would you use and what games would you feature and why? For the very last Bowser Rush encounter, I think it should be a celebration of how far the series has come and really just blow away its players with legitimately fun and creative mix-ups. If I were to design my own silly boss rush at the end of this gigantic Mario roller coaster of a journey, I would have it finish with a crazy bang that nobody was expecting while also being a huge crowd pleaser. I would start it off with the final fight from Yoshi's Island then a series of challenges involving Mario 1v1, such as winning a single game with him serving in Mario Tennis against Bowser, then having him play in just one hole on a par 5 against Bowser where you cannot do worse than tie with him, a race in Bowser's castle that you have to win on the N64, and then finally cap it off with the final Bowser fight from Super Mario 64. After all of this complete, we can finally make our way to the courtyard, where there are ghosts, and you already know what theme would be perfect near the ghosts, and isn't actually that big of a game, it's a little bit more than one gigabyte. Luigi's Mansion. Since Nintendo has made Luigi unlockable before, like with Mario Galaxy after you beat the game, the courtyard already has its own Luigi lore behind it. We just finished sections covering the mid to late 90s and then 2000s, and this would be the first appearance from the Mario Bros on the new system in 2001. And it's of course not a title featured in Mario 3D All-Stars, making it a really solid choice to end the whole journey with. And if you own this anniversary collection along with 3D All-Stars, what more could you really want? Even with this game added, the whole thing is only taking up about two gigabytes, half of the space of an old Wii disc. I've given some thought to the top of the castle, where you can go after you get your 120 stars, and I figured the lives boost you get from Yoshi is already pretty great if it's transferable to the other titles, but if you were to change this all up, maybe as a fun little bonus, you can play Mario Pinball, just to serve as a little cherry on top of this large, mountainous, and delicious Super Mario Sunday. Or, it's not like they don't have room to just put Super Mario 64 here anyway. Maybe just give us a warp pipe so we can access and come out on Super Mario 64. Let's end this all with four closing counterpoints against the idea to have this conversation actually go somewhere. This would take too much effort or time. This is false. Every single one of these games already exists, and Nintendo has proven over and over again how easy this is for them to re-release and or port their own games to a ton of different systems. All they would have to simply do is create the castle, put those flags or detection points in the paintings to trigger the right game to start. It really isn't that difficult. Overworld hubs aren't difficult. This is self-evident. They've already done the hard part of creating the games. Now all you need to do is put them all in one place. If a legitimate effort was given with a legitimate team, how in the world would moving your own games to the same place when you have way more than enough space? Honestly take more than just a few months. They don't have to recreate the games, they just have to put them there. Number two, there's too many games in here and it's gotta be too large. As mentioned earlier, they aren't at all. All of the games together only added up to be a little bit more than 2 gigabytes, which is only around half the size of the earliest of Wii discs, while other ones can actually hold over 8 gigabytes. 
Nintendo wouldn't ever do this. Of course they wouldn't, I know that already. It's pretty obvious because they didn't hesitate at all to shit out a 93 ROM on a 2010 Wii disc to quote, celebrate 25 years with their biggest legacy, which is their own fault and their own loss for not fully realizing something better. Number four, this would hurt their overall sales in some way due to not being able to charge for some of these on virtual download. No, what it would actually do is result in a colossal amount of sales. If this game existed and people heard about it, it would fly off of the shelves. 1000% guaranteed. Who would not buy this? An extremely important thing to acknowledge is that there's a wide spectrum of Mario fans out there, and a large amount of people that grew up in the 90s only stuck with him through the Nintendo 64 before getting an Xbox or PlayStation 2. And for those of us that had a GameCube, which we know wasn't that many, and a ton of people completely jumped ship as soon as they knew they didn't want to play the next generation of games with a Wii remote. What this idea would actually do is move massive amounts of hardware. Their own fans would fight each other for copies and get a ton of old fans back into Nintendo's newest console. Every single person that matches the above description of not going with Nintendo beyond the N64 that I've talked with about this stops me mid-pitch to ask if this is a real concept and then says if it was, they would absolutely buy the newest Nintendo system for a title like this alone. It really would sway hundreds of dollars all over the place with a ton of different people and they would make hand over fist money if they actually made something like this. Heck, if you think about it, any of their main series would do great with an iconic hub connecting you to their classics. It's an amazing opportunity for them and the fans if they ever do something like this and they simply do it well. So there you have it guys, it's not too big, it's not too complicated, it literally wouldn't require that much effort, and since it's such an undeniable must have, I strongly believe that something like this would possibly become one of the all time greatest selling games period. I would absolutely love to hear what type of anniversary collection you guys have in your dreams, let's not tear each other down, let's build each other up and support good ideas. Nintendo may never make this, but hey, if the right fans see it, that know the right things, then maybe there will be hope after all for this almighty epic and worthy Super Mario Anniversary Collection. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and had fun watching. Thanks again.